Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson. Welcome to the next video in your Calculus 2 video series. Today we're going to be talking about convergence tests for series. Now the contents of this topic are covered in sections 11.3 through 11.7 .7 of the text. Now we're going to focus on three main tests. The integral test, the alternating series test, and the ratio test. In this specific video, we're going to look at the integral test. So what is the integral test? It's a way we can determine whether a series converges or doesn't converge. And so we'll start by looking at a series. The criteria for our test is that the terms of the series are positive and decreasing values. And if we have a series that meets that criteria, we'll define a function f such that f of n equals a sub n. Well, what does that mean? Well, if we look at our specific example, here we have the series i to the negative 3 power. And if I write this in expanded form, I will get, when i equals 1, I'll get 1 over 1 cubed, which is 1, plus 1 over 2 cubed, which is 8, 1 over 3 cubed, which is 27, so on and so forth. And so first I check the criteria. Are the terms of my series positive and decreasing? Yes, they are. Next, I need to define this function. So I'm going to let f of x equal x to the negative 3 power. And so the idea is if I put an integer values in my function, I should get the terms of my series. Now graphically I can see the relationship between the series and my function like this. I'm going to draw a picture here. I'm going to draw a coordinate system where the horizontal axis is n and the vertical axis is a sub n, the terms of my series. So when n equals 1, I will plot a sub 1 which is 1. So I'll call that 1 up here and this will be a1. When n equals 2, I will plot a sub 2, which will be 1 8 So maybe somewhere pretty low, probably in here somewhere. So this will be a2. And I can keep repeating that process. When n equals 3, I'll get a sub 3, so on and so forth. So basically the terms of the series are all these points, and the function is a function that goes through these points. Now what am I going to do with this function? The big idea of the integral test is if we define this function and if we look at the improper integral, the integral from 1 to infinity of the function, if that integral converges, then the series converges. And if that integral diverges, then the series is divergent. So in application, to determine if this series converges, all I have to do is look at the integral from 1 to infinity of x to the negative 3 power. So while this is the limit as a goes to infinity, integral of 1 to a, x to the negative 3. The limit as a goes to infinity of, now I'll actually find the antiderivative of this thing, I'll get x to the negative 4 over negative 4, evaluated from 1 to a. The limit as a goes to infinity of, and now I'll evaluate this at the limits of integration, I'll have 1 over negative 4 times a to the fourth minus negative 1 over 4 times 1 to the fourth. Now as I evaluate my limit, it looks like this first term goes to 0 as a goes towards infinity. I'm left with the second term which is positive 1 fourth. So what I see here is that the improper integral converges and thus I can say that my series converges. Now one common misconception is to try to say that the sum of the series is the value of this improper integral. And that is absolutely not true. The sum of the series is not equal to 1 fourth. We're simply looking at this to see whether it converges or doesn't converge. Now, how can we justify this process? Well, we can justify it graphically. If we look over here at our graph, and then if I generate a rectangle associated with each of the points then the area of each of those rectangles is the value of the term. So the area of the first rectangle is a1, the area of the second rectangle is a2, so on and so forth. In that case, the sum of the series should be the sum of the area of all these rectangles. But that improper integral represents the area under this curve. And so what I can see here is that if that area under the curve is some finite number, then surely the sum of the area of the rectangles also has to be a finite number. That's one way we can think about why if the integral converges, then the series must also converge. 
Now, we can actually go a little bit farther with this geometric interpretation and use it to actually approximate what the sum of the series should actually be. We know it's not equal to this one-fourth value, but we can use these improper integrals to find an approximation for the sum of the series. Let's take a look at that. All right, so here I have a series. I'm going to say this series has positive decreasing terms, and it is convergent. I also have the graphical representation for that. And now I want to talk about how I can find an approximate value for the sum of this series. So the idea is I keep adding up these positive decreasing terms. I should be getting closer and closer and closer to whatever that actual sum of the series is. Specifically, if I add up the first n terms, I'll get some value s sub n. So that's the sum of the first n terms. And once again, this should be some approximation to the actual sum of the series. I just haven't added the rest of the terms. Let's give a name to the rest of those terms. If I add up all the rest of the terms, I'm going to call that r sub n. and call that the remaining terms here. I'll say that's the remainder after adding up the first n terms. And so what I can see here is that the sum is s. I should now be able to represent that value as the sum of the first n terms plus the sum of all the remaining terms. And so if s sub n is my approximation, r sub n should be the error in my approximation. And so what I want to do is I can actually physically add up the first n number of terms. And so I can actually get a number value for this. But I'll need to find some sort of bound value for my r sub n. So how can I bound r sub n? Well, let's kind of take a look at a little example here. I'm going to add up my first two terms of my series. So if I add up the area of these two rectangles, that will be s sub 2. And I'll get some value for that. And then the sum of the area of the rest of these rectangles, well, that should be my r sub n value. And now I'm going to look at two improper integrals and see if I can use those to bound the value of r sub n. So the first integral I'm going to look at is the integral from n to infinity. So remember, my n value is 2 here. It's right there. Now the integral from 2 to infinity would be the area under this curve. There's my function that goes through all the points of my series. So that's my function f of x that I defined in the previous slide. And if I look at that integral, the integral from n to infinity, in a specific case 2 to infinity, well, that's the area under the curve, and clearly that's bigger than the area of all those rectangles that are making up r sub n. So this should be greater than or equal to that remainder value. So I have an upper bound for my r sub n. Now I'm going to look at a different integral. I'm going to integral from 3 all the way out to infinity. Now if I take the area of that curve, just slide it over to the left, the unit of 1, that point will go over here, this point will go over here, this point will go over here. I'll eventually get this curve. The area under that curve is really that integral from 3, or n plus 1 in general, to infinity of my function. And so I can see when I slide that, that area over to the left by 1, that the actual size of that area is less than all the area of the rectangles in r sub n. So this will be a lower bound for r sub n. And so now I have this general process for creating a bound for r sub n. And now I can use these bounds to form a range for s. The actual value of s must be in the interval that starts with s n, the sum of the first n terms, plus the smaller of the remainder values, this integral, which I can actually compute. And the upper bound for the interval where s could be was s sub n plus the upper bound. For r sub n. All right, let's look at a specific example. Here's a series we looked at in the last one. Now in this case, if I add up the first two terms, I could say that s2 is equal to 1 plus 1 eighth. So this is going to be 9 eighths which I could rewrite as 1.125. Now from the description above, I could say the actual sum of this series should be Now from the description above, I can see that the actual sum of the series should be in the interval from 
1.125 plus the integral the integral from 3 to infinity of x to the negative 3 whatever that number is and the upper bound for my interval where s could actually be would be 1.25 plus the integral from 2 to infinity x to the negative 3 dx so this should be a range where the actual sum lives in. All right, we'll save some time by using Mathematica to calculate these actual values to find the actual range where a s lives. So here in Mathematica, I'm taking my s sub 2, that's my 1.125, and I'm adding this lower bound for r sub n, so the integral from 3 to infinity of 1 over x cubed. And when I evaluate that, I have a lower bound of 1.18056. And we'll write that value in here. To find our upper bound, all we have to do is add that upper bound for Rn, the integral from 2 to infinity. We run that and we have a value of 1.25. So in general, the integral test can tell us whether the series converges or doesn't converge, and we can actually use this to find a range of values where the actual sum could be in. We don't know exactly what the sum of the series is, but we know it's somewhere between 1.18056 and 1.25. And we could actually make that a tighter range by simply adding up more of the series before doing the integration. And now, because we have Mathematica, we can actually use Mathematica to find the value of the actual sum of the series just to confirm that it is inside of our interval. To do that, I'll use the nsum command, nsum, and I will sum 1 over x cubed from x goes from 1 to infinity. I have a value of 1.20206 and probably some more stuff. But I can see that is within my interval. All right, so in conclusion, given some series where the terms are positive, decreasing values, we can define our function associated with that series. And then if the improper integral from 1 to infinity of that function is divergent, then the series is divergent. If that improper integral converges, the series converges. And lastly, we can generate a range for the actual sum of this series as follows. Alright, that concludes this video. Thanks for your time.